And finally, back to the summit in Washington, where in four hours' time, Mr Gorbachev will be hosting a dinner for the Reagans, the return dinner for the one held last night at the White House. The two first ladies met up again this morning for coffee. Raisa Gorbachev has made sure she has her own itinerary, seeing the tourist sights of the capital. And she hinted that she wouldn't like to move into the White House. This is a museum, she said. It was First Lady Day at the White House, Raisa Gorbachev arriving for coffee. The visit that had been offered ignored and then accepted late. Rumours that Mrs. Reagan was smiling at her Russian guest through clenched teeth were not to be confirmed in public. What was your impression of Mrs. Gorbachev? What do you think? Very, very nice, very bright. <laughs> The summit has been distinguished by both business and pleasure, a White House concert last night, and a rare sing-along with the superpowers. The tune was Moscow Nights, not often heard in the White House, and yet in this city, just one of many new tunes now being played. This is Tim Sebastian for the 9 o'clock news in Washington. The main point of the news again, there are strong signs of progress at the Washington summit, with unscheduled meetings of senior advisers running parallel to talks between Mr. Reagan and Mr. Gorbachev. All the latest from the summit talks on Newsnight, of course, just after 20 past 10 on BBC Two, with Peter Snow in Washington and Donald McCormick in London. You have been watching the 9 o'clock news from the BBC. Good evening. Now the latest news for the South. Good evening. Several families have had to be evacuated from their homes tonight following fears of a landslip. Some are staying with relatives while others have been put up at a hotel. The affected houses are in the Middenbury area of Southampton. Cracks began to appear after excavation work was started for 24 houses to be built on nearby land. The police throughout Sussex are tonight searching for an armed man who stole £25,000 from security guards as they were delivering cash to a bank in Brighton. The man, who was carrying a shotgun, went into Lloyd's Bank at Preston Circus this afternoon and ordered the guard to hand over the cash. Ten men have been honoured by the army today for their part in removing canisters of highly dangerous gas from a military depot near Basingstoke. Operation Apple took place last October when the gas was discovered buried at Bramley. The army said that if the gas had leaked, everyone within 500 metres would have been affected. The judge has been summing up all day in the trial of Russell Bishop, the man accused of killing two Brighton schoolgirls. Bishop, who's 21, has denied murdering Karen Hadaway and Nicola Fellows, whose bodies were found at Wild Park in Brighton in October last year. A verdict is expected at Lewis Crown Court tomorrow. A Bournemouth woman has shocked the art world. A painting that her grandfather bought for five pounds has been sold at auction in London for more than three quarters of a million pounds. The painting has been in the family for 60 years. Well, now here's an unusual Christmas present for any golfer. A set of clubs made from the original propellers that drove the QE2. The 34-tonne marine alloy bronze propellers were cut up in Southampton docks today before beginning their journey to the club makers in Scotland. 7,000 sets of clubs are to be made and they'll cost £1,000 a set. And now let's have a look at the weather tomorrow for golfers and everyone else. This evening we join Bernard Davey. A very good evening to you. When I was younger, I unsuccessfully tried to become a postman. Maybe it was just as well. They would have only have called me Postman Pat. At this time of the year, the postie does a grand job. They're very busy indeed. But whether you're on the late tonight or on the early delivery tomorrow, you're going to have to watch out for those ice patches. A widespread frost coming up tonight. Temperatures as low as 5 or 6 degrees Celsius in places. Just one or two places in the southwest, in the north, and perhaps down this eastern side, 
escaping that frost. Now, it's always difficult to know where the coldest place is going to be. There's usually a lot of cloud floating about, so it's quite variable. I couldn't make my mind up between Northern Ireland or the West Midlands, but at the end of the day, I've come down on the side of Shawbury in the West Midlands. You have a go, and this time tomorrow night, I'll tell you if you were right. Today, there was a, a good deal of sunshine around. Down in the Jersey, the, the sunshine there is 7.9 hours, and that's almost a maximum. I think the maximum probably somewhere around about 8.2 hours of sunshine. It was pretty cold in Lisburn near Belfast, only getting up to minus 2 degrees Celsius, while in the northwest of Scotland, the butt of Lewis, up to 9 degrees Celsius, 48 degrees Fahrenheit. High pressure still dominates the scene, so still going to be dry in many places. These frontal systems skirting down the eastern side, that'll bring some cloud, some rain, perhaps some showery rain from time to time, as it will do tonight. A good deal of cloud, some spits of rain, perhaps some snow in the hills, some sleet showers just creeping into Norfolk. That cloud coming down as far as the North Midlands by the end of the night. But a good deal of fog around tonight, some dense freezing fog patches, so you'll have to watch out for those as well. Tomorrow that fog lingering on, perhaps into the afternoon in some places. Still some showers down this eastern side, most of them dying away during the course of the afternoon. Most of the country then dry, bright and quite sunny, but quite cold with that fog lingers on, perhaps only getting up to one, two degrees Celsius during the course of the afternoon. And still a fair breeze down in this southwestern side, accentuating the cold. That's it. Good night. <laughs> Drama for Christmas on BBC One. Bergerac is given the clue to a mystery in the Whispering Gallery of St Paul's. I'm involved in a little game which seems to be taking me to Jersey. Philip, what exactly are you playing at? Oh, I'm not playing at anything, Sergeant dear. Miss Marple investigates the case of the 450 from Paddington. You do realise, don't you, that one young woman has been murdered already? I can look after myself. It's an adventure. There's Alan Akeborn's black comedy, Way Upstream. Hadworth Brickworks! What? Hadworth Brickworks, just passing the starboard. Well, wow, I must just dash off a postcard. And a typical Albert Square Christmas for the EastEnders. Is this alone? Oh. Arthur! Arthur, this is my house, we're all set and done. Yes, and the way out at the moment, you're welcome to it. Christmas on BBC One. Sports nights a mere 50 minutes away here on BBC One with coverage of six-a-side football from Manchester and the World Indoor Bowls Championship at Bournemouth. Before that, we meet a Tasmanian widower who discovers what's involved when you're living like a lord, the upper house being the destination of the visit. <laughs> The visit next Wednesday at 9.30 follows the long and exhausting wait which Mark Humphreys endured for a heart-lung transplant. However, soon after the operation, Mark died from an infection. And so next week's programme, called Give Me Tomorrow, exists as a memorial to his courage and a tribute to the transplant team. In Newsnight on BBC Two in a couple of minutes, Peter Snow reports on the summit in Washington. And the Pakistan cricketers hit out at the English team management. On Sunday on One, Our Jeff, a comedy drama about a crisis in Yorkshire cricket. He's on the phone in tonight. Pardon? Your hero. If he's their best player, why are they giving him the boot? But when Eric arranges a charity match for Jeff, his problems are just beginning. Oh, 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 oh. Our Jeff on Sunday at five past nine on BBC One. Oh, sorry. And the games continue now on BBC One with Steve Ryder and Sports Night.
Cricket in desperate need of a peacemaker. We wait for the apologies, we wait for the decision. Do England stay or do England return home? And as the Test match crisis grows, one man at least is happy to be out of it. Well, Steve, when you think that uh, a few years ago I said that my mother-in-law should go out there for two weeks, all expenses paid, which was a tongue-in-cheek uh, joke, um, I got fined a thousand pounds, so I suppose a poor old gat at the moment is looking at 30 years hard labour. Joking, of course, but it needs somebody to take the heat out of a worsening situation in Pakistan. We'll have the opinions of Ian Botham and others. We ask what will happen to the tour and how it all affects international cricket as a whole. But elsewhere tonight, it's the final stages of the Soccer Six. Everton, Spurs, Arsenal and Coventry join Manchester United and Forest in the battle for soccer's top indoor prize. Soccer six and bowls two, the second of the quarter-finals from Bournemouth. In a brief visit, Smith and Thompson for England against McMullen and Corkill for Ireland. Apologies for the voice, by the way. Too much indoor soccer, not enough fresh air. Hope it lasts the programme. But we start inevitably with the situation in the second test. As you're bound to have heard, no play on the third day between Pakistan and England in Faisalabad. Deadlock in the argument between Mike Gatting and umpire Shakur Rana, although Gatting has offered a written apology for his behaviour yesterday.